Are you tired of hearing no in your fundraising efforts and unsure how to turn those rejections into successful donations? Well, in this video, I'm going to reveal seven game-changing nonprofit fundraising strategies that will transform rejections into results. You're going to leave with a toolkit that even the most seasoned fundraisers wish they had when they started. Believe me, with 30 years of fundraising experience behind me, I've faced my share of rejection, but I learned a few tricks to navigate them successfully. Imagine turning every no you hear into a stepping stone towards your next big yes. That's not just wishful thinking, it's absolutely possible with the right approach. So let's dive into seven nonprofit fundraising strategies for handling a no. First up, feedback is your friend. Use rejection as a chance to get some feedback. Ask why they said no. This information is gold. It helps you refine your approach. Now, I once approached a corporation for a significant donation, and after reviewing our proposal, they said no. Instead of just walking away, I asked for feedback. They felt our project lacked a clear long-term sustainability plan, something they highly valued. So taking this feedback to heart, we went back to the team and devised a robust sustainability model, which was not easy. But the next time we approached a different donor with a revised pitch, it was met with enthusiasm and resulted in substantial support. So this leads to tip number two, understanding that no sometimes means not right now. Maybe your donor has other priorities or doesn't have enough information. So I once approached a local business for a donation, but the owner declined. So when I asked her for that feedback, it was due to her budgetary constraints. So realizing it was a not right now rather than a no, I kept in touch, occasionally sharing updates about our work. Six months later, when she had a new budgetary cycle, Mrs. Thompson reached out and offered to fund a major part of our project. So this experience taught me that understanding the no and staying patient can eventually lead to a yes. So speaking of persistence, tip number three is navigating ghosting in fundraising. It's not uncommon to an encounter a situation where a potential donor suddenly stops responding or never responds at all. And it's crucial to handle these situations with tact and professionalism. Patience, strategic follow-ups are the keys. Give them some time, then reach out with a gentle reminder or an update about your organization, and this might rekindle their interest. However, it's also important to recognize when to move on and focus your efforts elsewhere. So tip number four is about refining your pitch. Sometimes it's not about the cause, but how you present it. So I pitched this successful tech entrepreneur, and despite the project's importance, my initial pitch was filled with emotional appeals and that did not resonate with him. He was a little bit hesitant. So reflecting on his background, I revised my pitch to emphasize the data-driven impact of our project, its scalability and the technological aspects. When I presented this refined pitch, focusing on measured outcomes and innovation rather than emotion, it immediately caught his interest. He not only agreed to fund our project, but also offered technical support from his company. So this experience was a valuable lesson in tailoring the message to align with the donor's perspectives and interests. Number five, mastering the six rights in fundraising. A proven nonprofit fundraising strategy is something we call six rights. Engaging the right person to ask the right prospective donor for the right gift, for the right program at the right time in the right way. By strategically considering all of these six rights, especially timing, you can significantly increase the likelihood of a positive response and build a more meaningful, lasting relationship with your donors. And tip six is offer alternative ways to support. So it's important to recognize that not everyone can contribute financially, but they may still want to support your cause. So offering alternative ways to get involved can not only nurture goodwill, but also broaden your support base. So consider your options like volunteering, gifts in kind, or even advocacy and spreading awareness. I use this strategy often, especially when trying to secure new corporate donors. If faced with a no, I will inquire about employee giving programs, matching gift programs, or in lieu of monetary contributions, gifts in kind. Tip seven is build a relationship. Rejection can be an opportunity to build a deeper connection. Show genuine interest in your potential donor's values and needs. So for example, I reached out to a potential donor during a fundraising campaign who initially wasn't interested in our cause. Instead of giving up, I focused on building a relationship with her. I learned about her interest and discovered that she was very passionate about the addiction sector. And even though we didn't directly do that, when a program did come up, she was the first person that I went to. 
And not only did she end up donating, but she ended up volunteering with us. So this showed me how understanding and aligning with the donor's passions can turn a rejection into a meaningful and successful partnership. Handling rejection and fundraising is an art. It's about learning, adapting, and staying resilient. With that, check out the next video where I dive into the art of asking for donations. It's a game changer for any fundraiser. The strategies I shared here today are just the beginning. Apply them and watch your fundraising programs grow. And if you found these tips helpful, you know what to do. And I'll see you next week.